we should mention Ryan Cohen is back in the spotlight this week after GameStop naming him to lead the company's e-commerce transformation. That stock rallied more than 40 percent yesterday, and it's up once again this morning. Joining us right now is Sarah Needleman. She's a reporter at The Wall Street Journal. Also, Nigel Vaz, who's the CEO of digital consultancy, Publicist Sapient. Um, Sarah, I'll start with you on this just to kind of run this through. This seemed like an impossible task, the idea that you would take a company that we were kind of writing off as blockbuster and that it would be able to transform itself into Netflix. But when you have Ryan Cohen involved, and by the way, he's put his money where his mouth is. I think he owns 13 percent of the company now. People are starting to say, is this possible? What do you think? Well, Ryan is uh, the person behind uh, Chewy, the online pet retailer. That was a pretty successful company that he built up and sold. And uh, he has a vision that people, uh, at least some people think, could work. And certainly it makes sense that uh, he wants to take this company and modernize it by making it more uh, tech-centric than the bricks-and-mortar-centric model it's uh, had for the past three or so decades. Nigel, th this is no small task, though. The idea of doing something like this when you already have so many big players, let's say the console makers, like a Microsoft and a Sony, that are so directly involved in downloading games at this point. You have mobile games that are out there, and they take up about, even though the apps are free, you know, people spend money on those things to get some of the digital tokens that they have. That takes up half of all spending on gaming right now. What, what's left? It seems like this is a pretty tough uphill slog. I think when you think about gaming, though, Becky, right, we're just at the infancy of where gaming is going. And most gaming that comes from individual companies are restricted to their platforms. What GameStop allows gamers to do is look across gaming companies, right? They've got audiences that play PlayStation, Xbox, all of these different games. And when you think about where we are, we're at the infancy of a market that's about to start to get into digital content, real community experiences, esports is picking up in a big way, streaming services. So, you know, my thing about digital transformations is they're kind of like a little bit like an iceberg. You know, what the customer sees is important, but what you have to do underneath that organization to kind of prop up the, the bit that's above the surface is critical. And what I think Ryan and the team at GameStop are doing is basically saying, we got a long way to go to just fix the basics. If we can get things like e-commerce working for us, if we can get collect in store, if we can get communities going, if we can get more digital content engagement, certainly a long way to go. But I definitely think that there's a lot of room for them to grow from where they've been and, and are today. Nigel, that's a whole lot of ifs. And when you say they have this customer, how many customers do they actually have and how tight of a hold do they have on them? Well, I think you can look at, you know, I'd say, you know, not justifying necessarily what the stock's doing, right? But just thinking about the strategy of the company more broadly, as you said, they've built businesses like Chewy, you know, this, this team. And they understand that, you know, while the economic moat is what you tend to focus on, right, which is effectively the kind of famous Buffett principle of all of the traditional sources of value, my sense is now if a business can actually start to figure out how to, you know, focus on the experience, really bring some engineering capability, get new products and services out there, use data to constantly iterate on the business, there is no reason why a Disney who many people have written off it, you know, can't rival a Netflix, right? And and I feel like that is the journey that they're on. I mean, it's a long road, like you said, and there's lots of ifs, but certainly something that I think is a viable proposition. Hey, Sarah, when, when you look at this, I, I mean, honestly, this is something I would have laughed about three weeks ago. Maybe it makes a little more sense now, but you, you talk to a lot of people about this. What, what's your take on it all? Well, uh, the video game industry has been growing by leaps and bounds for um, the past several years, and certainly the pandemic has uh, given a major lift. And so um, uh, the publishers are doing quite well. Uh, but there are a lot of ifs because uh, this is a, the digital download market is already well established by the console makers. And even on the PC side, you have uh, services like Steam uh, that are really entrenched and have been around a long time. So it is really quite the uphill battle, despite the fact that this is a massive uh, and growing industry. Uh, I think that GameStop, if eSports is, is one avenue they could use because they do have a large retail footprint and they could potentially do some sort of a little league uh, type situation in their stores. But of course, uh, the pandemic uh, ha has made that very, very difficult. If the pandemic wasn't a factor, we might be having a different conversation about uh, taking advantage of that retail space. And so, um, 
uh, I think the the ifs are, are are big ifs, and it will take a lot of time and capital uh, for uh, the company to even have a, a shot at competing with all these entrenched players. Um, but Mr. Cohen, of, of all people, is is probably one of the best ones out there to uh, take on this task. He certainly has the passion for it, and he has a financial incentive for it. Uh, but it will take time. I, I don't think we're going to see a change overnight. Uh, certainly not as fast as uh, the way the stock has been moving. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.